I lift my eyes to the hills where my help is coming. All right, forgive me. We're talking about different kinds of forgiveness tonight. Uh, we have different kinds of forgiveness. Let me explain in a minute why this is so important. Uh, there are things that the Bible says that we have to do in order for God to forgive us. For example, the Word of God says that uh, if we confess, this is 1 John 1, 9. 1 John 1 says, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Turn in your Bibles and look at that. 1 John chapter 1. 1 John chapter 1, verses 6 through 9. If we say that we have fellowship with Him and walk in darkness, we lie and do, and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanseth us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Okay. Forty-seven years ago, uh, the best friend I had uh, was a deacon in the church that I served. Uh, he had emphysema. He was dying with emphysema. He asked me the night before, he said, uh, tomorrow's Melissa's birthday. Please take her and get her anything she wants for her birthday. I said, oh, we will. He said, from me, from him. Anyway, next morning at 8 o'clock, his wife called and said, uh, come quick, I've just heard a shot. Uh, the man had been to the emergency room three times that week, suffocating with emphysema. Horrible, horrible. He just couldn't lay down, couldn't get breath, just horrible. Well, we had his funeral, and then a friend of theirs invited about six of the preachers in our area to come to a big supper but all of us were good friends. And one of the preachers said to another preacher, he said, now you believe that Dr. Stockton went to hell, don't you? He said, well, our church believes that because we believe if you don't confess your sins, and he quoted this verse, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins. So he couldn't have killed himself and then pre then that's sinning willfully, but you can't do that. So it's a catch-22 on confessing your sins. So he said he didn't confess his sins, so he must have died and gone to hell. And another preacher there who uh, believed that same way, he said, well, I always believed that to Dr. committed suicide, and I know if anybody's in heaven, Dr. Stein is in heaven. And I said, so I'm changing my theology. <laughs> the problem is, Anytime there is a condition attached to a forgiveness, it's never going to be eternal forgiveness. If there's something that you have to do in order to be forgiven, then that forgiveness has to do with your fellowship with God here in this world. So every time there is a conditional forgiveness, a forgiveness that requires you to do something, that forgiveness is always going to be a forgiveness that has to do with our fellowship with God while we live here in this world. Our eternal forgiveness is unconditional. There's nothing that we do that brings about God forgiving us eternally. Okay? We're going to start tonight with Roman numeral, Roman numeral number two in your, uh, in your handout. Divine forgiveness. I'm going to mention a a few things there. Look at that Roman numeral number two. I've got five scriptures. What I've done on the subject of forgive, forgiving, uh, I've got the first two pages are kind of a summary, uh, and I've got five or six scriptures on each of the three categories of forgiving. First of all, Roman numeral one is us forgiving each other, people forgiving people. Roman numeral two is divine forgiveness, God forgiving his people eternally unconditional forgiveness. And then Roman numeral three is uh, divine forgiveness, daily practical forgiveness that uh, is necessary for our fellowship with God in state. Let's begin our study tonight and just talking about the eternal 
divine forgiveness that's unconditional. That's Roman numeral two. Eternal forgiveness at Calvary is unconditional and it's necessary for us uh, to go to heaven when we die. Read the first two verses there that are printed on the paper. Uh, both of these come from Ephesians chapter 4. In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. And be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. Okay. Why do you think Ephesians 1, 7 is so important? Um, because without God's forgiveness, we wouldn't have his, um, eternal salvation. Without God's forgiveness, we would not have eternal salvation. Very, very good. Okay? And that forgiveness is by the blank of Jesus Christ. What? Blood. By the blood of Jesus Christ. And that uh, that forgiveness is by a five-letter word. Grace. Grace. Very good. You're right on your sharpest attack tonight. All right. So our eternal forgiveness is by grace. That's what we started out mentioning tonight. Our eternal forgiveness is by grace. It's by the blood of Jesus Christ. The scripture says, and let's look at this because it's very important. Uh, that we have a, a scripture reference on the blood of Christ. Look at uh, 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 18 and 19. 1 Peter chapter 1, I'll read verses 18 and 19. For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things, as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your Father, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. Okay. So we were not redeemed. The Bible often does this. It'll give you the negative and the positive. That you were not redeemed with corruptible things of silver and gold, but you were redeemed with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. Okay? Go to chapter 2, verse 22. Chapter 2, still in 1 Peter, chapter 2, verse 22. Read 22 through 24. Who did no sin, neither was God found in his mouth. Who, when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judges righteously. Who his own self bare our sins in his own body on the tree that we, being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. Okay. So by his own self, he bare our sins in his own body on the tree. We as the people of God, we need to always realize if it wasn't for the blood of Jesus Christ. There are some people that they want to get rid of any mention of blood. Uh, their, their songs, they get rid of songs that talk about blood, that the preachers don't preach about blood. If it weren't for the blood of Jesus Christ, we would be, every one of us would be eternally lost. So we are saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. Alright, look at the, the third, the third uh, scripture printed under that eternal forgiveness. Let me read that please. Forbearing one another and forgiving one another, if any man have a quarrel. Quarrel. You know what a quarrel is? Fussing and fighting. Quarrel. Have a quarrel against any. Even as Christ forgave you, so also do you. Okay, so he's saying now, Christ forgave us, we're to be forgiving one another. Alright? Do number four and five also. Blessed, blessed are those who, whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not input sin. Okay, how blessed are we? How blessed are we because of this eternal forgiveness? There's no way we can never thank God enough. Not in this life and not for eternity. We can never thank Him enough for saving us from our sins. Alright, number five. And ye being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh hath He quickened together with Him, having forgiven you all trespasses, bloating out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. Okay. 
How do you know this verse is talking about eternal forgiveness? Because we were dead in trespasses and sins. And he one is because quickened. you being dead in your sins, that would be one, had he quickened, all right? What else causes you to know that this forgiveness is eternal forgiveness? Nailing it to yes. the cross. Yes, very good. The last phrase in that verse says, nailing it to the cross. So that, that helps if you look at the whole verse, and then that last phrase in verse uh, Colossians 2.14 is saying that it was nailed to the cross. All right, that's eternal forgiveness. Usually when somebody is talking about uh, God forgiving us, that's the forgiveness they're talking about is eternal forgiveness. But now we need to know all about the conditional forgiveness. So there's a daily practical forgiveness. It's a conditional forgiveness. It's necessary for our fellowship with God each day. If you read that first one under that. We're in uh, Everybody see where we are? And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. For if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Okay, what does that mean to you? If we don't forgive other people for the things we do and hold a grudge, or we won't be forgiven of the things we do. And That's right. That's exactly right. If we're not willing to forgive other people of their trespasses against us, he says, I will not forgive you your trespasses. Now, wouldn't you say that probably every one of us has trouble sometimes forgiving some people? Oh, yeah. And the best thing I do is just mark them off my list and I don't ever think about them again. But that's not really forgiving them. Uh, when you forgive them, then you're not holding that grudge. And uh, you can even pray for your enemies when you truly forgive them. Very, very difficult to forgive. But I want you to know, if we don't forgive, if we hold those grudges, we're always bringing back up things that people have done wrong. And this is very important. As you get married, one of the biggest problems that I have to deal with with couples that I'm counseling is that the wife or the husband will bring up something that the spouse did a year ago or three years ago. They go way back. They don't ever forget something that the spouse did that's wrong. The person that does that, the person that holds those grudges, that person is, is going to experience the severity of the judgments of God. Why? You get married, you and your husband have a fuss and fight, you say, okay, we've got to go see Brother Billy. Okay? And you, and you say, let me tell you what he did about six months ago. Let me tell you what he did about a year ago. Here's some examples of what he's doing wrong. Okay? Now, what, how can I tell you if, if you're the one that's doing that, what am I going to say to you? That I need to forgive. That you need to forgive. And forget. And forget. People that say, I forgive, but I will not forget, are lying. They do not forgive. If you can't forget, that doesn't mean your mind cannot go back and bring it up. But listen, if I've forgiven you, I don't have any ill will towards you at all. And everybody in the church, and every husband and every wife, they better learn to forgive. If you can't forgive and forget, you're, you're, you're going to experience the severity of the judgments of God. Because God said, if you don't forgive men of their trespasses, neither will your Father in heaven forgive you of your trespasses. And I trespass against God every day. And I want God to forgive me every day. And therefore, I need, I must forgive. And that's one of the reasons... Someone told me one time, I think y'all just pray mechanically. You know, we pray the example prayer at the beginning of every worship service. And somebody said, I don't like that. I think y'all are doing it mechanically. I said, well, I'll tell you what I do every time, every single time when I get to that part of the prayer that says, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. I said, it makes me search my soul. And think about, I need to forgive somebody. So, uh, it can be done mechanically, but uh, if you don't ever pray it, because that's what I did from the 6th grade to the 12th grade school, I never prayed that part of the prayer. We had prayer every day at school. We prayed the example prayer every day at school. But I had a boy that made me mad in the 6th grade, and uh, I didn't want to forgive him. And so... Uh, 
the next day when we were praying, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. I realized what I was saying. I didn't realize it until that day. God made it right in my head. You are not forgiving that person. And therefore, I'm not going to forgive you. So I quit praying that prayer. I quit praying that one part of the prayer. Why? Conviction. Conviction. However, when I was a senior in high school and was studying my Bible a lot more, and I saw after the prayer was over, after that example prayer is over, then it says, if ye forgive me in their trespasses, your Father will forgive you. But if ye forgive not me in their trespasses, neither will your Heavenly Father forgive you. So whether you pray it out loud or don't pray it out loud, there's a principle in God's Word. If you don't forgive other people, God's not going to forgive you. Does that mean you're going to die and go to hell? No. I've never told somebody that was afraid of eternal hell if they did something. Everybody listen to what I'm saying? I've never corrected them and said, you won't die and go to hell, but you will experience a hell here. Tell me why. If somebody is afraid of eternal hell, see, see somebody tell me. They'll behave. They'll behave better. And if I say, no, you won't die and go to hell, but you'll experience a hell here, they say, and then they go right ahead and do. There, there has to be fear in the, in the minds of God's people that some things are so serious you'll go to hell. Jesus often, the Word of God, tells people, you better fear God who is able to cast both body and soul into hell. Does then Jesus say, now I'm not talking about eternal hell. He doesn't do that, does he? Everybody follow that? Turn in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 10. Matthew 10 verse 28. And we're talking about forgiveness, but, but in the middle of all this, we're, we're talking about fearing God and that uh, if we don't forgive others, then God's not going to forgive us. And I need to know, I need to know, I will go to hell, I will experience hell if I don't forgive others. Everybody understand what I just said? How many of you think I just jumped track? Tell me what I meant when I said I will experience hell or I will go to hell if I don't forgive. Um, if we don't give others the same kind of forgiveness, then Christ won't extend that same forgiveness to us. Which means what? Uh, we will go through like hell. Yes. Yes. Okay. Matthew 10 verse 28. And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul. But rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Jesus tells his apostles here, his disciples, fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Now is that a warning to me? Yes. Is it a warning to dead alien sinners? Those are not children of God? Is it a warning to them? No. We as children of God, we had better fear God. The command to fear God. The whole duty of man is to fear God and keep his commandments. Okay? Let's go back to forgiveness. It's just very, very important that you don't hold grudges. And I don't know of anything more difficult for people to... If people don't learn it early in life, listen carefully to what I'm telling you. If you don't learn this principle early in life, Ten years from now, if that's part of your psyche that you don't forgive and you keep bringing up past things that somebody's done, uh, it's going to ruin your life. It'll ruin your life. It'll ruin your marriage. It'll ruin everything. It'll ruin your fellowship with your children because you'll keep on bringing up things they did. And they'll realize, ain't no way for me to live this now. I'm just going to keep bringing it up. Daddy's going to keep bringing it up. You follow me? Got to learn to forgive. We have to learn to forgive. <clears throat> okay? We're on the daily practical forgiveness uh, from God. In order for us to experience that daily practical forgiveness, we have to forgive one another. Go to the second, number two, under B, under Roman numeral two. This is number two, under B, under Roman numeral two. <clears throat> But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ his Son cleanseth us from all sin. 
If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Okay, explain that. <clears throat> so if we're walking in the light, which is the truth of um, Jesus and his word, then we'll be able to have fellowship with each other and have unity with the brethren. Um, and if, if the if shows us a conditional forgiveness, if we confess our sins, then his character to be faithful and just to us, he'll forgive us um, from that and we'll be able to have fellowship again. Yes, and it says to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. What does that mean? The sins that we're confessing? Yes, yes. What does it mean for God to cleanse me from unrighteousness? Change your heart? Uh, partially. Cleanse us from unrighteousness. It's purification. It's a purification. Cleansing. It would be like a total, like, dirty car to clean car. Like, okay, yes. Dirty car to clean car. That's exactly right. My conscience is going to be clean. My conscience is going to be cleansed. Because he's going to forgive me. And he's going to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Uh, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. There is a practical forgiveness. Uh, let me see if I can find it very quickly. Did you know that, that we wash our robes in the blood of the Lamb? Did you know that? <laughs> All right, let's look at that very quickly. All right, Revelation chapter 7, starting with verse 9. What's the difference in us, wa us washing our robes in the blood of the Lamb and Jesus washing us in His blood? What do you think is the difference in us washing our robes in the blood of the Lamb and Jesus Washing us, cleansing us. Quit. I was just thinking he does a better job. <laughs> <laughs> okay. He does it gets car cleaner, does he? Alright. Uh, he does a better job, but what else is it? One is an eternal forgiveness where he washes us, and the other one is a practical forgiveness where we wash ourselves in the blood of the Lamb. Active obedience. Active obedience. Confessing our sins. All right, Revelation chapter 7, starting with verse 9. After this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with, with white robes and palms in their hands. Clothed with white robes. We, remember that. We're going to go back to that in a little bit. Clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. Go ahead. And cry with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, which, which sitteth upon the throne, and unto the Lamb. And all the angels stood round about the throne, and about the elders, and the four beasts, and fell before the throne on their faces, and worshipped God, saying, Amen, blessing, and glory and wisdom, and, thank you, and thanksgiving, and honor, and power, and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. Now listen carefully. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes? And whence, and whence came they? Who, who is this angel asking that question to? Who wrote the book of Revelation? John. John. This is John, and he says, it's John the Apostle. The angel said to John the Apostle, what, what are these which are arrayed in white robes, and whence came they? Listen to his response. And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. Listen, that's the best response you can ever give when you're asked a hard question by somebody that you know they know the answer and you don't. Sir, thou knowest. Isn't that pretty? Sir, thou knowest. Okay, go ahead. Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, these are they which came out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Did everybody see that? 
These are they which came out of the great tribulation. Now where, did, where do you read about the great tribulation and what is it talking about? Matthew 24, when it's talking about the destruction of Jerusalem, talks about the great tribulation, okay? Now these are they which have come out of the great tribulation and have what? Washed their robes. They washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Do you see that? That's a cleansing, a, a practical cleansing. It's not something God did for them. It's something they did. They washed their robes in the blood of the Lamb. That's the same thing as 1 John 1, 7. Go back to 1 John 1 that we were just reading. 1 John 1, verse 7 says, But if we walk in the light, as He is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanseth us from all sin. When does the blood of Jesus Christ cleanse us from all sin. What's the condition in verse 7? If we walk in the light. Then in verse 9, he talks about us being cleansed from all unrighteousness. In the 7th verse, he said he cleans, the blood cleanses us from all sin. In the ninth verse, it says he cleanses us from all unrighteousness. What's the condition that leads to the cleansing from all unrighteousness in verse 9? What's the condition in verse 9? If we confess. Do I see the difference there? Verse 7 he says, if we what? Walk. If we walk in the light, then the blood of Jesus Christ his Son cleanseth us from all sin. Verse 9 says, if we confess our sins, then the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all unrighteousness. Why is this important that we look at this practical forgiveness that has to do with our daily fellowship with God? We can get confused in thinking that uh, forgiveness is, our eternal forgiveness is dependent on us if we don't rightly divide. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. If you don't understand practical forgiveness, conditional forgiveness has to do with our fellowship with God versus eternal forgiveness has to do with our relationship. My relationship to God is father-child relationship. What can change my relationship to God? Nothing. Nothing can change my relationship. Everybody follow that? That's the relationship. Now, can do you think I ever lost my relationship to my natural father? Did I ever lose my relationship to my natural father? I'm asking a question that you better say no to. No. Thank you. <laughs> you can't lose your relationship to your natural father. You can't lose your relationship to your heavenly father. You can lose your fellowship. My fellowship with my daddy was fragile, on and off. You strained. Know. Say it again. It was strained. Strained, yes. It was strained. What caused my fellowship with my daddy sometimes to be strained? Your behavior. My behavior is exactly, exactly right. <laughs> We as the people of God, we need to be so thankful that God has shown us in His Word the difference. If, if you don't understand this conditional forgiveness only applies to your daily practical fellowship with God, you're going to beat yourself coming back trying to explain the Word of God. Because there's a multitude of scriptures. In fact, in fact most scriptures that talk about God forgiving us is conditional forgiveness based on us doing what God tells us to do. Eternal forgiveness is by grace, by the blood of Christ. It's forever. It's settled. It's sealed uh, at the cross of Calvary. Practical forgiveness fluctuates uh, based on how we live, what we do. And then uh, us forgiving one another has to be something we do. And I cannot stress the importance of us forgiving one another. I have never had anybody come to me and ask me to forgive them that I didn't forgive them. Everybody hear what I just said? Why do you think that's true? You want your heavenly father? Uh, that's right. It's because I'm scared. You see any signs on the back of the truck ain't scared? I'm scared. <laughs> I'm scared of God. And so when, when I know, and I know that God's going to not forgive me if I don't forgive somebody else, then it will have a profound effect on my forgiving other people. 
And understanding that truth will have a profound effect on your whole life. The rest of your life. Okay? Can you wash your robe in the blood of the lambs? Yes. What will that result in? Fellowship. Yes. Very good. Will you be cleansed from your sin by you washing your blood in the lamb? Yes. Very, say it again. Yes. Yeah, that's right. Uh, will you be eternally forgiven of your sin because you washed your robe in the blood of the lamb? No. No. Very good. Very good. We've briefly gone over eternal forgiveness is by the grace of God and by the blood of Jesus Christ. We've gone over conditional forgiveness from God it requires us to do something that has to do with our fellowship with God. And then we've talked about us forgiving one another. Anybody have any questions about forgiveness? How many of you think you can do a better job of forgiveness? How many think you want to do a better job of forgiveness? All of us. Okay.